Welcome back to Nathy Hate, and today we're going to talk about the epidemic of review bombing that is plaguing Metacritic with all recent AAA or major exclusive releases for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. So earlier this summer, we saw Astral Chain get review bombed for the simple reason that it was a quality game from Platinum Games on the Nintendo Switch. This was then followed up with a review bombing of Gears of War 5 on the Xbox One because... I guess because it was a good Xbox One game releasing in 2019. And today we see the same effect happening with Death Stranding on the PlayStation 4. And this is just another video game release that's getting review bombed on Metacritic. And Death Stranding is getting review bombed because of, I guess, just miscellaneous reasons. And all this brings about is the question in my mind is... Is this what the gaming community has fallen to? Do we have to review bomb every game we dislike? It's time to grow up. Hating on a game or overly praising a game isn't going to improve our life. Microsoft, Nintendo, or Sony aren't going to come knocking at our door with an award saying, thank you for your loyalty and undying defense of everything we do. They don't care. They're a conglomerate. The game doesn't care. It's a disc. It's a toy. It's an object meant for entertainment. And yes, the review bombing is on both sides. It's the negative side and the positive side. Both of these are wrong. And all it's doing is making rev user reviews worthless. Because a game doesn't need you to defend it. Nor should you be attacking a game just because it's not on your platform of choice. There's two simple ideas when it comes to gaming. You either play the game, or you don't. Now if you play the game, that entitles you to an opinion. You don't have to like the game. You may have played it, realized it wasn't something for you, and you could give an honest, genuine, user review, citing examples of why the game was not your cup of tea. And that is fine. But what we see with review bombing is that if you did have actual valid critiques, it's going to be drowned out by the wave of meaningless, unjust, empty review that gives it a 0 out of 10 because it's on the PlayStation 4 or because a user thinks Hideo Kojima is a fraud and your review that may actually be justified and it has actually had time committed to it with a bullet point of valid arguments is just going to be lost in the shuffle and that's the same for positive user reviews you can come out and you can have a nice compilation of where you think the game succeeds and it's going to be drowned out by the random fan who's just saying well, this game is great because it's on the PlayStation 4. So Metacritic and any site that has user reviews has to come up with a system that either verifies your purchase by linking it to your PlayStation Network account, your Xbox Live account, Nintendo Switch account, some sort of account so that there is at least some sense of, I guess, accountability in place. Otherwise, just get rid of them. Because all the number does is it's used for war. And I'm going to recite a negative review for Death Stranding that is on Metacritic. And it reads, Walking Simulator. Boring gameplay. A big fail from the overrated Kojima. Okay, well your first two points could have been valid if you actually expanded on them and explained them in a little more detail. But then you made the last comment of, a big fail from the overrated Kojima. And that completely nullifies any point you're going to make because you attack the creator for no reason. You don't have to like what Kojima makes. And calling him overrated is just petty and, you know, whiny. It sounds like something that a spoiled brat would say. But 85 out of 154 users found this useful out of 2,600 user reviews on Death Stranding on Metacritic right now. And then, now let's look at the positive reviews. Not a game that all players will love. That is somehow an 8 out of 10. 
and it, it says nothing. But there is a positive review on Metacritic that brings up a good point. Now let me find it. Here it is. It gives the game a 10 out of 10. And this is what the user writes. Metacritic must remove the user critic from this page. You can see a lot of haters or fanboys voting without play of the game like me. Then the user critics should be linked to PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Steam accounts. Thanks. Yeah, it's a positive review bomb, but at least it has a sensible message to it. They're saying these scores are worthless from users because in truth they are. The game just came out today and unless you got it at midnight or 9 p.m. last night, you may have put in 22 hours of the game so far. But let's be real, nobody has. So your opinions at this point are based on probably just a handful of hours. Now can you come to an opinion in just that amount of time? Absolutely. But you can't review it. Don't impulsively go to a website and say, well this game sucks, I played it for two hours and I don't like it. Now you may not like it, but you're not running to Metacritic to give it a zero out of 10 because maybe the game just didn't resonate with you. Go to Twitter, go to a gaming forum, talk to your friends and explain why it didn't resonate with you. And that's where a user review has the benefits when you can actually articulate why you didn't like the game or maybe why you did. Like when you have a conversation with your friend about the game you're playing and you say, hey, I don't really like this game, you explain why. Or you explain why you did enjoy it. That's, what a, that's when a, review, a user review is beneficial. When you explain and you have a conversation and you discuss the pros and cons. All we get from these review bombs of these big releases is... It's basically just fans coming to the defense or coming to wage war for no purpose other than, I guess, to troll. And this is going to happen again next week, next week when Pokemon Sword and Shield releases. It's going to be the same type drama again. You're going to have negative reviews over things that we've already known. It's going to be about the Pokedex. It's going to be about the Pokemon missing, which alone are valid points. And they are likely going to appear in professional reviews. But you don't come in and give the game a zero because Bidoof isn't in the game. And you're going to have people come in and say the game is a 10 out of 10 because it's an HD Pokemon on Switch that comes with a shiny new case. What we have to do is we have to do better. You don't like a game? Explain why. Give honest feedback. And let people read it and say, hey, I think I agree with what they have to say. That's why the game didn't resonate with me. And if you like it, same, same thing goes there. Give honest feedback. A game like Death Stranding is polarized. It's not a game for everybody, but no game is for everybody. And the re professional reviews articulated that. Some maybe didn't do a good job at it. Others... Maybe they use phrasing that is just giving ammunition to those who want to hate the game because one line of a 2,500 word review said, Death Stranding isn't fun, but now read the rest of that content. Understand the context that the reviewer is putting the game in. Everyone wants video games to be accepted as art. And when it comes to art, not everyone looks at art and agrees that it is a masterpiece. Jackson Pollock created some of the world's most unique art. And at the time when he was crafting a lot of these pieces, the art community mocked him. They laughed at him because they said, your art looks like a kindergartner was just throwing paint around. But he knew what he was doing. He knew the exact vision of what he was creating. And only after he died did the art community come to accept his works. And now some of his work can fetch up over a hundred million dollars for an original Jackson Pollock. Art is up to interpretation. And if video games are art, then it's okay you don't like it. But don't ruin the enjoyment that someone else may have for it just because it doesn't fit your criteria. 
of what a game should be. And that's where we as a community have to do better. You don't have to like the game. And I can respect your opinion for not liking the game. And if I like the game and you don't like it, we can respect each other's opinion. It's not that complex. They're video games. They're entertainment. They're fun. They're for joy. They're for distraction. They're for us to remove ourselves from the harsh realities of the current world and lose ourselves into a fictional environment. So let's go back to having fun with them. And if it's not something you're going to enjoy, just don't buy it. If it's something you are going to enjoy, buy it. Love it. Tell a friend about it because maybe they'll enjoy it. So that's, that's all I have to say on this topic. And that's, that's what I'm going to sign off at. So this is Nate the Hate signing off and reminding you, no trees touch the sky.